All right, so continuing our series on learning how to model in SketchUp in 30 days. In today's video, we're going to model an object that requires us to use the scale tool in order to create a taper in the way that the shape is created. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to create a lighthouse. And basically, the way that the lighthouse works is we need to start with a circle with a certain number of segments. So in this case, what I want is I want to tap the C key to create a circle. And notice how down at the bottom, once I tap the C key, I can set the number of sides. Well, I'm going to type in a value of 12. I want this to be a 12-sided circle because I don't want it to be super smooth. I actually want to see a little bit of the actual segments in the lighthouse that I create. But then I'm going to give this a radius of 10 feet right here. All right, so then what we want to do is we want to push pull this up by a height of 50 feet. Right, so I'm going to type in a value of 50 right here. Now, what we want to do, though, is we have a cylinder at the moment, but we want the cylinder to taper inward. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to select this top face and we're going to tap the S key to activate the scale tool. Well, notice how right now if we scale this, right, it's going to scale across the two corners in here and it's not going to be uniform. It's going to be kind of off to the side like this. Well, if you tap the control key, then you can scale about center right here. But then what I want to do is I want to scale this in a value of maybe like 0.5, something like that. And so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to create a cone that tapers inward. And so we've done that, but we're going to want to create stripes on this lighthouse. And so the way that we're going to create the stripes on the slight on the lighthouse is to use hidden geometry. So you can access hidden geometry by going over here to the display button and turning on the option for hidden geometry. Notice what that does is that shows you the hidden lines and faces that make up an object like this. Well, in this case, what I want to do is I want to use these as guides in order to split up this face so that I can have stripes. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on one of these and I'm going to click on divide. And I'm just going to divide this into however many segments I want. In this case, we'll say that we're going to have six segments. Well, then what I can do is I can draw a line across here in order to split this face. OK, and so then once I draw one of these, I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode. So I'm just going to select it, tap M and tap control. And then I can single click and move my mouse up like this. And I'm going to type in times and however many copies we said there were going to be. So if I type in a value of times six, that's how this is going to look right here. And then you can just come in here and you can just erase out the extra on each one of these. So now we've got these edges and we need to make sure that they repeat around the outside of this cone. So we're going to go through and select them. We're going to tap the Q key to activate the rotate tool and we're going to rotate these between these two segments right here. But we're going to tap the control key in order to create a copy. So I'm going to click right here to create a copy and then I'm going to type in times 12 and hit the enter key. And so what that's going to do is that's going to come in here and that's going to split all of these up. Well, the cool thing about this is now if I turn my hidden geometry up, I've got my stripes in here that I can apply colors to. And so we'll come back and we'll do that in a little bit. For now, what I want to do is I want to create the walkway that goes on the top up here. So to do that, I can just tap the F key to activate offset. And then we're going to offset this out by however wide you want your walkway to be. So in this case, I'm going to say maybe like 2.5 feet, something like that. That's a little big, maybe two feet. I like that better. Then we're just going to come in here and we're going to push pull it up a little bit. So to whatever you want this thickness to be, it doesn't really matter. You can say two feet again, that probably works fine. But then you can just erase out this edge right here to fill this in. So now what we've got is we've got the base of our lighthouse. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select all of this. And I'm going to make it a group just so we don't have all of this geometry merging together. Well, now we need to create this top piece. And notice how I'm having trouble finding this central inference point in here. If we just double click in here and then just right click on this edge, there's an option for unbroken circles where you can find the center. So notice how when I select the option for find center, it drops a guide point in here that I can inference from. Then I'm just going to tap the C key, type in a value of six and hit the enter key. So that's going to allow me to create a six sided circle. So that six sided circle is going to make up our uh, little room at the top where the lighthouse would be. And we'll say this has a radius maybe of like, we'll call it five feet right here. Then I'm just going to push pull that up to whatever we want this height to be. And in this case, notice how this is getting push pulled up 
um, with no lines along these edges right here. It's just kind of smooth. That's because this is an unbroken circle. It's just an unbroken circle with six sides. Well, if I right click on it and I click on explode curve and then push pull it up, notice how it push pulls this up and those edges are no longer smooth. So in this case, that works for me because I don't want the edges to be smooth. I want these to be flat faces. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna push pull this up to a height of seven feet ought to be just fine, just like this. Well then, I'm gonna offset this end by tapping the F key and then moving my mouse and clicking, and we'll offset this in maybe like four inches or something like that. And then I'll take the bottom line and I'll move it up, maybe another eight inches like this. So that's gonna be our glass that this is made up of. But then I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use the rotate tool in copy mode to create a copy. Then I'm gonna type in times six so that I get copies all the way around the outside. And then finally, let's model our roof. So I'm gonna offset this out, maybe to the same width as this line right here, but then I'm gonna push pull this up to whatever I want the height of my roof to be. This is probably gonna be fine. And again, I'm just gonna erase out this interior right here because I don't really need it. And you can kind of look in here and you can see some extra edges through this face that you can erase. But then I'm just gonna take this top face and I'm just gonna scale it in. And I'm gonna type in a value of maybe like 0 0.01 and hit the enter key. And so what that does is that brings all of these in and scales them um, very small. You could come in here and draw them to a point instead, but for me, it doesn't really seem to make that big of a difference. So then I'm just gonna take that whole thing. I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna put it in a group. And I'm also gonna take this piece select it and put it in a group. And so a couple more things. First off, I wanna go ahead and I wanna make a wider base right here. So I'm just gonna use the offset tool to offset this out. And I'm gonna push pull this down. So I have a wider base on the bottom. But then I also wanna model a house coming off the side of this real quick. And we've talked a little bit about modeling a house, so I'm just gonna do this real quickly but I'm just gonna draw the footprint of the house, kind of like we did in our house modeling tutorial. And I'm just gonna push pull it up to whatever I want this height to be, maybe like 10 feet. I'll draw a line across the middle. We'll move that up a little bit, maybe like five feet. And then we'll take these edges and offset them out like this. And then we might take this roof and make it a group just so that it's separate geometry in here. But we'll give it a little bit of a overhang. And then I'm just gonna push pull this back. Actually, we'll push pull the rest of that in a second. For now, I'm actually gonna push pull the house through the lighthouse right here. And that's actually a little wide. So I'm just gonna take the whole thing, use the scale tool and scale it in like this. I just don't want it to be wider than the actual lighthouse here. I'm actually gonna scale it back a little bit because I feel like it's a little long. So then I'll just triple click the whole thing, make it a group. We'll extrude our roof and erase out these extra lines. And then we'll add a door and a window. So we can use the tape measure tool as a guide and use the rectangle tool to draw a window. And we can erase out this guide. And then from here, we just need to add materials and maybe a ground plane. So um, the ground plane in this case, you could do a few different ways. Um, what I might do in this situation is this is probably the only time I would ever really use this tool is I might click in here and use the freehand tool in order to just kind of rough out some ground around here. I don't want to go crazy on it because um, the ground isn't really a massive part of what we're trying to do here, but I can use this to create some ground like this. Maybe push pull it down. And then I'm going to right click or I'm going to select all of that. And I'm going to make it a group. And then I'm going to take the bottom plane and I'm going to do a control C to copy it. I'll click out of the group and I'll look for the paste in place option. And I'm going to paste that face 
down below right here. So I'm going to push pull it down and then we'll scale it outward a little bit like this. And so we're a little bit limited here because we don't really have any proportional editing tools. Um, otherwise we could get a little bit more complex with this, but I think it looks pretty good for what we're trying to do here. Well, now we're just going to add our materials. So we'll click in here. And again, what we're doing for this object, um, we probably just want to use colors rather than getting too crazy into textures. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to apply these colors right here. Maybe add like a brown material or something to the actual walkway here. Do the same thing down below to the base. Maybe use that brown color for our door and window. And we may want to go ahead and just group this geometry so that we can just apply the material to the entire outside. Then we'll take our roof and we'll apply this red material to our roof and do the same thing around the top here. And what I might do in this situation, because I just want these faces around the outside, is I might just drag a right to left selection box like this, because that'll select anything that touches and that's gonna allow me to select those surfaces really quickly. And then we could do the same thing here, but we could drag our mouse right to left to select this and then just hold the shift key and do a right to left selection. And that's gonna deselect everything that we didn't have selected in here like this. And in this case, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pick a glass material for the top of our lighthouse. We'll pick a light green material right here. And I'm gonna take this whole thing and make it a group. And I'm gonna give that maybe a darker brown color. We'll just go with this brown color right here. All right, so remember, anytime you create any kind of tapering shapes or anything like that, you're usually going to use that sticky geometry. So make sure you understand the relationship of geometry to edges inside of SketchUp. Um, I will link to the next video on this page as soon as it's ready to go. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.